Welcome to Munson Made This. My name is Michael. I don't think out of all the videos that I've made that I've actually introduced myself properly. Uh, this video is coming out on January 1st, 2018, very first day of the new year. And so a lot of people are making new year's resolutions to have a healthier life and to uh, maybe even lose weight. Just, uh, it always seems like new year's resolutions include bettering oneself. So for the first video of the new year, I wanted to do a kitchen tour um, to show you kind of around my kitchen, which is probably 99% vegan. Uh, Ben, who also lives here, is not vegan, so there's a few items you may see as I show you around the kitchen that aren't vegan, but most of the, uh, most of the things you're gonna see in here, because I was vegan when we moved into this house, uh, are, are vegan. So, um, as a way to tell you a little bit more about the vegan lifestyle and my philosophy on cooking and how I shop and the way that I have my kitchen stocked, um, hopefully will help you if you are planning on going vegan this new year and maybe converting to a healthier lifestyle for 2018. Also, I wanted to add a bit of a disclaimer here. I don't know if many people are like me, but I actually really enjoy grocery shopping. Uh, I don't really go clothes shopping or furniture shopping. I mean, I do enjoy that to some extent, but I love grocery shopping. And when I go grocery shopping, normally I hit up about four grocery stores. Uh, I just went shopping yesterday, which is why I want to do this video today, because my kitchen is pretty much fully stocked. Um, cooking is what I like to do for fun. I, it's just being in this kitchen, playing with food is kind of my hobby. So. Uh, like I said, acquiring food to play with is something I enjoy also. So yesterday I actually went to four grocery stores. Uh, I went to Whole Foods, Sprouts, Trader Joe's, and Albertsons, which is just my local regular grocery store, which is just down the street. Um, it did take me a few hours to do that, but I enjoyed every minute of it. So you won't maybe be able to find all these products at one single grocery store. You may have to seek things out, but uh, again, I really enjoy the process of shopping and it's kind of how I like to spend my Saturday mornings. Weird, but that's just me, so. So um, I'm gonna be taking you clockwise around my kitchen. I'm gonna be starting with the fridge and the freezer. Then I'll take you through the cupboards and introduce you to my uh, rack or my, my shelves of jars. And then I will finish you off with uh, my uh, pantry, which is converted to my storage space for all of my kitchen toys. So let's begin. All right, let's start with the refrigerator. I'm going to show you the door of my refrigerator. Uh, I do keep a lot of pickled items on hand, pickled peppers, pickled jalapenos. I really like spice, so I have a ton of these pickled things in here. Uh, next rack down, I try to have this kind of organized by ingredient type. These are my hot sauces. I think it's important to have Asian hot sauces and Mexican hot sauces. Uh, the joke is that a uh, favorite vegan, uh, a vegan's favorite food is sauce. And I try to keep a lot of things on hand so I can make a lot of sauces or pre-made sauces. So that's pretty much what you're gonna see in this door here. Hot sauces, the next uh, drawer uh, shelf down, we have some like Korean barbecue sauce. I have hoisin sauce and some different dressings. And of course, one of the most important sauces of all, veganaise. You can make so much with veganaise. Uh, let's go back here. This uh, top shelf here has a lot of my plant milks. I was actually experimenting yesterday and made my own almond milk. I don't know if it's worth the, uh, the process. It tastes amazing, but I don't know if the milking the uh, almonds thing is necessarily worth it. So I have a few different plant-based milks. I do uh, keep almond milk and soy milk at, uh, in my house at the same time. Uh, I do feel they have different purposes. Almond milk for cereals and things like that. And I really like soy milk for cooking. I think it's the best plant milk for cooking. Uh, this is actually the byproduct. I don't know if you can really see it here, but it is the leftover almonds. I'm going to make probably like a brownie recipe with these if I can find out. Uh, I need to just do some Googling. I had a really great uh, almond flour brownie recipe that I used to use when I'd make almond milk in the past, and I just need to find it again so I can make those brownies. Uh, these are some leftovers. It's a soup that I made. It's a lentil soup. I used a uh, if you look at my videos, there's a recipe for a curry. And uh, I basically use that curry recipe and put lentils in it instead of tofu and other vegetables. And it's kind of a nice, just creamy lentil curry soup. 
Uh, down here I have some experimental coconut yogurt. As I said, uh, my hobby is playing in the kitchen. So, uh, I, not coconut yogurt, sorry. It's cashew yogurt. I don't think it really worked, but I can still use that cashew milk for something else. I have some lettuces, this cheese drawer. It's still a cheese drawer to some extent. I have some vegan cheeses here, uh, but I also use it to store my tofus. I'm obsessed with sriracha baked tofu. I forgot when I went to the store that I already had some on hand. So I have two of them now, which shouldn't be a problem. Tempeh. Uh, I have a Violife Parmesan cheese here, which is, uh, it's okay. I don't, I don't mind it, but I don't use a ton of vegan cheeses normally. Uh, some soda pop. Here's some leftover seitan that I made. And this is a vegetable drawer. Again, I uh, like to keep a lot of different kind of things on hand. Carrots, I can make cheese sauces with. They're great just for dipping. Broccoli, you never know when you're gonna need that. Some cauliflower. Uh, I love these reusable produce bags. Uh, I actually use these as the nut bag or the nut milk bag also for making the almond milk. They have a lot of great purposes. But cauliflower, I have some zucchini in here also. Again, they'll probably become sauces. At the very bottom, I have a couple different kinds of potatoes, sweet potato, uh, Yukon gold potatoes, and some tortillas thrown in here as well. So that's pretty much it for the fridge. Uh, this is stocked for me. Um, I like to keep some fruits and vegetables on hand. There was an apple in there I didn't really show you, and an avocado. Uh, I like to have a bunch of stuff. Um, my philosophy when cooking is basically just keeping a lot of ingredients on hand so that whatever I want to make, whenever I want to make it, I can. That doesn't necessarily work for everybody. I don't always follow a recipe, but um, I like to be able to watch a YouTube video or look at something and say, oh my God, that looks good. I want to make that and be able to go in the kitchen and make that right away. So yeah, let's go on to the freezer. The freezer has, uh, I try to keep it as organized as I can. Doesn't always work. Uh, I have some different vegan meats up here, some chicken, and yeah, they're both different kinds of vegan chicken. Uh, I love these vegan spring rolls, just some snacks and things like that if I do get lazy and wanna throw those together. This is one of my obsessions, this Trader Joe's Japanese style fried rice. You just throw it in the pan. It is so amazing. Uh, Ezekiel bread, I don't normally buy this bread, but I'm gonna be trying it out and uh, we'll see if I like it. Uh, some more just fake meat products or meatless meatballs. Uh, I don't use a ton of uh, vegan meat products, but uh, it is sort of nice to have on hand if you decide you want something like that. Bottom shelf is, uh, it's a drawer actually. It's full of frozen vegetables, frozen potatoes. Uh, I'm not gonna go through that whole thing, but again, it's nice to have just frozen vegetables on hand. You can make curries. You can basically just add vegetables. You have a soup. Uh, it's just nice to keep those on hand, stir fry. I don't know. It's, if you run out of fresh vegetables, having frozen vegetables in your freezer is a lifesaver. Uh, on the very top here is where I keep some spices. Um, lately I've been buying spices in bulk, kind of accidentally, but I like to keep them in the freezer so they stay fresh. And uh, over here are my nuts and seeds. I have some pecans and some, sunflower seeds, as well as cashews and almonds. Keep them in the freezer so they stay fresh, the oils don't go rancid. And same with some hemp seeds and some flax meal. That's pretty much it for the freezer. Uh, it's just a nice place to keep some things on hand that uh, you know you can go to in the last minute if you're craving something particular, but I don't necessarily keep, I don't think, a ton of stuff in there. So. Let's move on to the cupboard. Here we are at the cupboard. This is where a majority of my dry food uh, or I guess non-perishable food uh, exists. Uh, the back wall here is filled with a bunch of different kinds of beans. I stocked up a lot yesterday. I have some refried beans, I have black beans, I have black eyed peas, I even have some baked beans. On the bottom there, I have a couple cans of chickpeas which I keep on hand, not only so I can make hummus or I can add chickpeas to salads or various dishes, but then also the aquafaba that I can use if I bake. Uh, I do like to keep a can of marinara sauce on hand. There's nothing like just being hungry and wanting to throw together a quick spaghetti, doctor it up with some spices and seasonings and you've got dinner. Uh, I haven't tried these yet. They are a uh, vegan chocolate chip. It was all I could find when I was 
uh, on vacation in Texas last week and they ended up coming home with me. Usually use a Trader Joe's vegan chocolate chip, but uh, I'm gonna be trying these out soon. Coffee, um, this is actually a Starbucks coffee inside this canister. I got really into Vietnamese coffee for a minute, so I bought this Cafe Du Monde uh, brand, which has a chicory in it, which gives it a nice spice, but I've just been reusing this can for my other coffee. And some lentils, which haven't made it to the jars yet. I guess you can get a better view of my bean selection here. Hot sauce that hasn't made it into the fridge. I also keep some uh, canned tomatoes, and I'm down to one can of coconut cream there. This is some maca, or sorry, this is actually cordyceps, something I just randomly picked up, but don't really use. Some peanuts left over from a couple of those Asian recipes that you saw, the, the pizza and the uh, Asian nacho cups as well. Has chilies, so I can make some uh, chili. I haven't tried this yet. It's a falafel mix, should be pretty good. I do like to keep one of these on hand also. Uh, Mori New Silken Tofu. I like the firm, they come in firm and soft, but uh, this is really nice for making sauces with. I do have a video where I made burgers and I used this to make, uh, I think it was like a Korean barbecue spread for a burger and a In-N-Out sauce. Uh, this is just a really great product for making sauces with tofu. Uh, these are not vegan, Lucky Charms. Uh, these are Ben's, um, some soup have on hand. Up here, just some crackers, uh, random things to dip. I love these Mary's Gone Crackers. Um, not everybody likes them, but I like a real grainy, seedy cracker. If you can see up here, I've got a bunch of ramen. <laughs> uh, this is the oriental flavor and the chili flavor, uh, flavor of the top ramen brand actually are vegan. Definitely not the healthiest, full of sodium, but sometimes it hits the spot, throw some tofu in there, throw some more spices, seasonings. Uh, it's a real comforting soup for me. I grew up with it. Uh, I pretty much survived on it through college, so it's got a very special place in my heart. Uh, Cliff bars, keep these around. And I think what else is in here? Oh, some nori so I can make sushi. And I love these rice papers. Uh, really great recipe, Edgy Veg has a great recipe for a uh, rice paper bacon. And these are nice just for making wraps. Uh, there's a few things on my, I think my Instagram where I rolled up some vegetables and things in, in this. It's sort of like a sushi roll with the rice paper wraps. And they were pretty good. And, uh, oh. So that's pretty much it for the, the cupboard here. Mostly it's just about the beans and the canned tomatoes. And um, that's about it for the cupboard. So I'm gonna put this back and then I'll show you the next one. In order to not make this video too long and not spend too much time uh, discussing every single thing, I'm actually gonna be posting a list below of what I like to keep on hand, sort of my vegan kitchen pantry staples. So uh, don't get overwhelmed with me throwing a bunch of stuff or feeling like I'm missing some things here. It's all gonna be in that list below. Um, I'm gonna move on to this cupboard here, which uh, isn't going to work to show you inside because it opens up very strange. So I've taken some of the most important items out of there. Lately, I've been very obsessed with uh, brown rice pastas. So I've got a few of these on hand. Again, I like to be able to say like, just yesterday, I was watching a YouTube video, Lauren Toyota. Uh, I was watching a baked macaroni and cheese video. Looked amazing. I decided, hey, you know what? I want that right now. I'm gonna make this. And because I had the ingredients on hand, I had cashews, I have this, uh, these noodles, uh, I had plant milk, I had nutritional yeast. I was able to pretty much throw this dish together. So I just like to be prepared for whatever. Uh, again, that might not be the best for everybody, but that's how I roll. But anyways, these rice pastas, I, I really think the brown rice pasta is my favorite uh, gluten-free pasta. I'm not gluten-free by any means, but um, I've been using a lot of this lately. Same with other rice noodles to make um, pad thai, which I don't do as much as I'd like. Uh, brown rice spaghetti. These are dried bean curds. I had this salad when I was in San Francisco at a vegan sushi restaurant whose name I can't remember right now, but it was a tofu skin spicy miso salad. 
and I've been obsessed with it and trying to chase the uh, tofu skin. So I found this dried bean curd is the closest thing I have come to. I haven't really played with it too much, but I'm kind of excited to experiment. Uh, you basically rehydrate it in water and it's kind of like a chewy, it's also called Yuba. Um, I wanted it in a thin sheet, but this is all I could find. So I'll be playing with this soon, experimenting. Dried mushrooms, I use a dried porcini mushroom for risotto. Uh, these shiitake mushrooms are really amazing. Um, I use these when I make a mapo tofu dish, which I would like to make more, but I try to keep these on hand as well. Really great flavor. Um, in terms of sauces and things like that, I uh, always have rice vinegar. Uh, I have an apple cider vinegar, uh, rice wine vinegar. I have a bunch of different kinds of vinegar. Uh, liquid aminos as well as coconut aminos, pretty much the same thing. They're uh, soy sauce substitutes. Always have sesame oil on hand. Mirin is great for making Asian sauces. Sunflower oil is a pretty nice all-purpose oil for cooking and uh, maple syrup for sweetening things and coconut oil. I use this uh, filtered coconut oil or refined coconut oil as a butter substitute for baking a lot of the times. I also have a squeeze bottle of olive oil up in there, which you've seen me use a little bit before as well. So pretty much all that's important in this cupboard. While I'm standing here, I actually wanna show you this. This is my Breville Smart Oven. I use this probably I definitely use this more than my regular oven, especially living in Las Vegas. In the summer, it gets hot. You wanna be able to bake things, bake potatoes, bake breads. Uh, having a small little toaster oven like this, or it's a, it's a full oven, essentially. It's not just a toaster oven. Uh, it's so nice to have pizzas. Uh, again, it's the perfect oven, especially in a place that gets hot and you don't wanna heat up your entire house. I also have this Keurig coffee maker. I use the re usable pod here. And uh, I already showed you my coffee earlier. This bowl is where I keep um, vegetables and fruits that don't necessarily need to be refrigerated. Spaghetti squash, butternut squash, or sorry, I did that in the last video when I had a acorn squash, kept calling it butternut squash. So spaghetti squash, acorn squash, onions. If I have avocados that need to ripen, I keep them in here. Sometimes apples, lemons, things like that. But this is all that's in here right now. And I actually keep my uh, B12 and vitamin D sprays right by my coffee maker. So I make sure to take those in the morning. The regular oven, which I'll show you right now here, uh, gas powered, gas powered stove, gas powered oven. When uh, looking for a place to live, I always make sure that there is a gas range. Uh, I don't really care to cook on electric. I haven't cooked on convection yet, but in terms of my cooking experience, gas is the way to go. Microwave, I do use occasionally for warming up water. Sometimes it's perfect for reheating leftovers. I don't ever really use it to cook, though I pretty much use it mostly as the timer because it's perfectly right there and I can just set the time and cook right below it. There are a couple of cupboards I'm not gonna show you inside. They just have dishes, but this is probably my pride and joy. Uh, the crowning glory of the kitchen, these two Ikea shelves full of jars. Uh, I've also labeled them with a label maker to add that nice touch to it. Uh, I do actually use these ingredients quite often. It's where I keep things like my rices. I usually have a jasmine rice, a sushi rice, a brown rice. Uh, it's where I keep my nutritional yeast and oats and sugar, uh, dried beans. Um, sometimes they don't really, these size jars, these are I think pint jars, they don't really hold the entire amount of beans that I normally buy in a package, but I do try to buy things in bulk and keep this in mind and so that I can fill these up um, and not have to buy like more than I would ever really actually use. So uh, other things in here are some spices. I've got the dried porcini mushrooms, some bay leaves, some buckwheat groats. Just uh, these are the uh, better than bouillon jars. I love these just for small amounts of things that I want to save that are dry that don't necessarily need a lot of space and I don't want to use a plastic bag because then I'd have plastic bags in my drawers and it would be a mess and I'd never find anything. So this keeps things nice and laid out, although I do have some other things hidden um, behind 
I pretty much know all what's up here though, so um, even though things are hidden, I know what things are. So mostly rices, beans, there's some flowers um, that are up there. Also, actually, let me show you. This is another <laughs> overflow of jars. These are just a lot more flowers and uh, panko breadcrumbs, uh, breadcrumbs, uh, cornstarch, chickpea flour, which I use a ton of, tapioca flour, which these things are, uh, they can be kind of used interchangeably. They do have slightly different textures, but they're definitely a, a staple that I would recommend. Uh, Korean chili flake, which is great for any Korean dish, and gluten, which is what I use to make seitan. So that's just kind of a jar overflow. I got a little bit obsessed with jars for a while, so I was buying a bunch of jars and putting anything I could in jars, but then I just ran out of space. And uh, I like keeping those plants up there, so I didn't want to overcrowd those, and they love the sunlight. So keeping a few extra jars up here was my only option. Below the jars, uh, my knives. My mom actually gifted me a set of these knives, and I've collected a couple others along the way. The newest addition here. This is just a little magnetic knife rack from Ikea and it's amazing. Keeps them from getting banged up in drawers and chipped up. They're a little bit old. They've got some cracked handles from previous roommates throwing them in the dishwasher, but they live on and uh, I love them. The sink. What about the sink? I hate the sink. Uh, if I could change anything in my life right now, it would be this sink. Why? Um, it just always looks scratched around the edges. I feel like it's like peeling up and if you can see it bounces, I feel like stuff gets caught under there. Also the, uh, of course it's not happening now that I'm showing you, but oh, there it goes. This thing likes to come off. Uh, sometimes this doesn't like to turn. So this is something I would definitely love to get new. I would love a nice big farm sink. I don't know if I'd, want to keep it two-sided or not, but this is something I'm probably going to spend some of my Christmas money on as a brand new sink. So we've almost made a, well, I guess we're about halfway around the circle here. Uh, this cupboard here has some overflow empty jars and uh, I'm starting to be a little bit better. A friend gave me these field notes for my birthday and I'm trying to be a little bit better of writing down recipes when I'm experimenting and playing around in the kitchen so that I can duplicate them and hopefully make videos and share them with you. Stuff to make cocktails up there. These are the plates and things like that. I think it's really important to have big bowls uh, for big salads, big dishes of vegetables. Um, I had this obsession for a while with salad bars and I always wanted to have like my own salad bar type situation at home. And it was like, what is the difference between like salad bar situations and my own home situation? And why do salads taste different? And I feel like I was always making salads in these bowls and it just wasn't, I don't know, it just didn't sell it for me. But once I bought these big bowls, uh, it felt like my salad game changed. I was able to put a ton of more uh, vegetables and toppings and things in there and it just really sold it as a meal. So big bowls, I think, are definitely something that you need to get. I'm not going to go through all of my bottom cupboards and show you my pots and pans and, and things like that, but uh, I do want to show you a couple of these. These are my kind of daily drivers here. You've seen my Le Creuset. Uh, my mom actually was buying those for me for birthdays and Christmas for a couple of years. I have as many as I could possibly use, uh, and I use those for the videos. They're really nice. but. Daily, these are pretty much the pots and pans that I use. This pan I actually bought off Home Shopping Network. It's a Curtis Stone. It's the best nonstick that I've ever had. It's the only one that hasn't lost its nonstick power after, I don't know, a couple of months. And uh, I absolutely love it. It can go up to high heat. They say you can even use metal in it. I feel like I'm selling it like I'm on Home Shopping Network right now, but it truly is uh, the best nonstick that I've ever had. And this pot is something that I left home with when I moved out of the house, uh, when I went to college. It's old, it's haggard, but it's the thing that I always grab first when I'm, I don't know, heating something up, boiling water, or making soup. Uh, this is just my, my comfort pot, I guess. I'm what I learned to cook on, so it's what I gravitate towards. Again, these are my daily drivers for my uh, pots and pans. I almost forgot, uh, spices. I keep my spices in a drawer only because I don't really have the counter space or the cupboard space to keep them anywhere else. 
Uh, as you can see, there's a ton of different spices. I'm not gonna go through and tell you all of them, but uh, I love to keep, as I say, I like to keep a stocked kitchen so that I can make whatever I want, whenever I want. And uh, this is pretty much the spices that are called for in most <laughs> dishes. I can't think of anything that I don't have. Uh, there's even some more smaller things hidden back there. I do have some uh, things that I use very often on the countertop here, paprika, um, what are those, sesame seeds, garlic powder, onion powder, some parsley. And uh, those are things that I use pretty much in most dishes so I keep them close to the stove so I can quickly grab them. But it's also nice having the uh, spices right here. I'm right-handed so I can quickly just grab them, cook with them, oh, I need this. Just makes it really nice for me to grab. So maybe try keeping your spices in a drawer. Maybe uh, something that works for you too. Just to give you a bit more perspective on the size of this kitchen, it's not huge at all. Uh, I've heard some people comment that my kitchen seems so big, but uh, I just have a movable island that I put in here, uh, or I have at least with the last couple of videos, but I can pretty much touch <laughs> both sides of the kitchen by standing here in the middle. So it's, it's not a very large space, but I do think it is organized nicely. It's got this sort of triangulation thing going on that helps quickly move from one thing to the next. Uh, again, it's not a, not a very big kitchen, but uh, it's actually the perfect size for me. As we complete the circle, we're gonna move over here to my favorite part of the kitchen. We're gonna be passing this kitchen table, which we never use. Uh, occasionally, it's nice to sit down, uh, enjoy a meal, but it's not something that happens often at all. Normally, I'm, if I'm quickly eating, I'm eating standing up in the kitchen or eating in front of the TV in the living room. So move here. This is where all of my appliances, uh, small appliances live. This is what I've collected over the last, I don't even know how many years, pretty much any kind of Christmases or any time I ask for gifts, it's usually some type of kitchen utensil or small appliance like this. So this isn't something I just picked up one day and bought all of this. This is a collection that is curated over time. So. Uh, I have a rice cooker here, which I absolutely love. I think it's pronounced uh, Zoji Rushi. It's kind of expensive, but it's definitely worth the money. You can do so many different things in it. I have a air fryer back here, which is probably the most used kitchen appliance next to my smart oven. Anything frozen <laughs> comes out better in an air fryer. Anything breaded that you don't wanna fry. I don't really like to deep fry because I feel it just gets oil everywhere and it stinks up the whole house. So I try to do anything that would be deep fried in an air fryer. Espresso machine, which I absolutely love, other than the fact that the pods, you can't fill your own. I have a KitchenAid mixer, which I don't use that often, but I still love. Food processor down here. Vitamix is hidden in the back. Um, I have a dry grain um, pitcher and the regular one. This is so I can make my own flowers, which I don't really do. Hidden back in the corner is a uh, food dehydrator, which I never use. Um, I get in some kicks every once in a while, but it usually just sits back there. Instant Pot, which is probably the third most used appliance in my kitchen. I have a mixer, a uh, waffle iron hidden down here, air fryer. There's a handmade pasta crank in the back. And here, which I haven't used in a couple of years, is a crock pot. Since I got the Instant Pot, I, I feel like there's no reason to slow cook anything when you can get the same slow cooked thing in a fast cook. So uh, electric pressure cooking is definitely uh, paramount to slow cooking in my opinion. So this is my, uh, know, this is my pride and joy. Up on top, I have a few things, a spiralizer, which I don't use all that often, but I still have it. Magic Bullet, which you've seen me pull out a few times. Coffee grinder, an immersion blender back there, which I surprisingly don't use that much. I just would rather throw it in the Vitamix and get the same effect. So, what my appliances. I just wanted to end this video sitting at the table that I said I'd never sit at. And um, one last thing I wanted to show you in terms of my kitchen, probably another of my uh, most important appliances is this phone. Uh, I look up recipes constantly. I use this. If I see something on my computer, I'll take a picture of it. Uh, it's my cookbook. It's probably, again, the most important thing. I don't know. 
everything's the most important thing, but uh, it's what I use quite often in my kitchen to cook. I, I have a ton of cookbooks, but this is the thing that I always use to look up recipes and to cook what I'm going to cook. So here we are, very first day of 2018. This is probably the, I think the 18th video that I've filmed for this channel. I just wanted to do something a little bit different and just kind of let you a little bit more inside of my life and um, just give you a little bit more of who I am. Uh, this is not my full-time job by any means, uh, making YouTube videos once a week. I'm actually a teacher. Uh, a few of my students follow me, so hi to those students out there that do. And uh, I really want to grow this channel in 2018 and give content out there that is going to benefit people, that people want to see, that show them that a vegan lifestyle is easy and painless. Um, I had the advantage when I moved into this house uh, a year and a half ago, that's basically the day that I went vegan is the day that I moved into this house. So everything I just showed you is basically a year and a half worth of collection of ingredients and spices and sauces and vinegars and all of that. It wasn't just one trip to the grocery store. It was a year and a half worth of collection. So don't get overwhelmed. Don't think that you have to have all these things all at one time. Uh, again, it's something that I've just, or these things are things that I've collected over a year and a half. It is pretty easy though, in my opinion, to make just a few swap outs that can veganize your kitchen very quickly. Just get rid of the milk, bring in almond milk, soy milk, get rid of the eggs, keep some chickpeas on hand. If you bake a lot, use that aquafaba. Um, just keep in mind the easy swap outs and, and keep those on hand so that if you do crave chicken nuggets, you can have frozen garden or, or frozen fake meat chicken nuggets in the fridge or you know whatever it is that you're used to eating just get the vegan version of it because there's a vegan version of everything out there right now uh, and just keep that on hand so that when you have those cravings you can go to that instead of the traditional meat option i feel like the greatest difficulty people have in transitioning is the is the ease um, is the, the, the convenience factor so if you just make it convenient for yourself like I said, I keep my kitchen stocked so that whatever I want to cook, when I want to cook it, I can. So I never feel like I'm wanting something that I can't have. But again, this channel uh, is, is, is about making this lifestyle easy and accessible. Uh, and so hopefully I can create videos for you that help you out if you are transitioning. Uh, if the first day of 2018 is your first day going vegan, hopefully you can look at my past videos and and, and see some recipes that you can make easily at home. Uh, if there's anything that you wanna see veganized or anything that you're interested in seeing how would you make that vegan, uh, drop me a comment below and I'll see if I can help you out and give you any suggestions or advice. So if you like this video, like this style of video, like it, give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, I'd love to be able to have more viewers so that I can spread this message and um, help other people out and just grow this channel. So. Again, like it, subscribe, also share it, um, share it with your friends, and uh, check out below, I will have the list posted of the things that I keep in my kitchen or that I try to keep stocked in my kitchen so that I can make whatever I want whenever I want. So I will see you next Monday with a recipe video, and you all have a great week, have a happy new year, I hope your 2018 is amazing, and see you next Monday.